Hello, it's Chris Hines from Wealthy. I hope you're all doing well. Today, I just wanted to run through a London property market review. We're approaching the end of the year. It's been a, a very eventful year for the London property market. We've seen a lot of ups and downs over the past 12 months. So I thought it'd be worthwhile reflecting on the 12 months that we've just seen uh, and running through how the London property market really has behaved and performed, you could say, uh, over that period of time. So we'll run into uh, the some areas that are performing exceptionally well uh, at the moment, how we've seen a real shift over the past three months back onto London real estate. It seems to be a main focus for a lot of investors, international investors, international homeowners looking to invest in the London real estate market. And we'll also touch on the rents and, and what's been happening in that rental world as well. So we'll get started. And if you have any questions come the end of the video, please feel free to reach out. Give me a call, flick me a message on LinkedIn or click on the book now link in the description of this video below. Uh, and I look forward to hearing from each and every one of you, but we'll get stuck into it. Now, to start off with, we'll run through a quick snapshot of London. So property prices continue to rise to reach pre-pandemic levels. The average price of property in London was £516,285 in October 2021. This is an increase of £9,429, which equates to 1.9% from September, where the average sat at £506,856. So we've seen some very solid growth uh, over the past three months. Now, private rents are rising strongly while prices appear to be stabilizing. Uh, the London rental market has really gone crazy over the past three to six months, more so the, the near, or the three months. Um, take, for example, my current rent. You may have heard me mention it before, but I've just extended my lease. And off the back of that, there was a, a rent review uh, and the rent has now been increased by about 9%. So there's been some very strong uh, growth growth in that rental sector. As we've seen more international students flock back to, to London to be in the capital. We've also seen overseas renters uh, flock back into the country as well. So it's really starting to create a very competitive uh, rental market. And not to mention that there isn't a great deal of quality stock available in the London market at the moment, but things seem to be leveling out from a rental perspective. Now, the speed of change in London's rental market is illustrated by a rapid shift from excess supply to excess demand in both the flat sharing and prime central London markets. Now, London property prices have increased 6.2% in the year to October 2021. And so it's finishing the year very strongly. And I think it's worth noting that up until September 2021, those uh, or that London property price increase was actually sitting at about 2.8%. So some very strong growth uh, over the two months from September to October. Now, much of the demand in the first half of 2021 seems to be directed at the second hand market as sale rates for new build schemes were very subdued. Completions and approvals of new builds in London have held fairly steady, but starts on larger private schemes are down. And when we're looking at or the definition of a larger private scheme, that's a development of 20 plus dwellings. Now, you may be wondering why are private schemes down? And that's been due to construction costs, delivery delays and wages have all grown rapidly in the recent months, putting pressure on development viability. Now, I thought it'd be worthwhile running through this. And as I previously mentioned on the first slide or the second slide, sorry. So London property prices have increased by 6.2% in the year to October 2022. Now, those stats were taken off ONS. And when you look at the right move statistics on the right hand side, and this is the November property price index, and you can see London was sitting at 2.4% on the right move index. Now, just a quick run over of the UK price growth. So UK house prices have increased by 10.2% in the year to October 2022, down from 12.3% in September of 2021. House price growth was strongest in Wales, where prices increased by 15.5% in the year to October 2022. And the lowest annual growth was in London, where prices increased by 6.2% in the year to October 2021. Now, this index on the right hand side uh, where this map is, is the right move index for November 2021. So this is the annual percentage change in house prices. 
As it has been for much of the year, Liverpool has led the way. Manchester in second place at 8.5%, Nottingham at 81 and London sits at 2.4%. It doesn't actually make it onto the, the top 20 on this list. Um, however, the stats that have been pulled on the left-hand side are related to the ONS, which is the Office of National Statistics, um, which is also a trusted source, and they were updated as of the 15th of December, which stated that London has seen an annual price growth of 6.2% to October 2021. Now, if we look at the numbers that were released from the ONS, so this is a breakdown of all the regions across the UK, uh, including Scotland and Wales and Northern Ireland. So now, as you can see at the monthly change section, so everywhere in the UK, other than Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales and London, has seen negative growth over the past month. Now, what that could be telling us is the fact that we're seeing a lot more international tourists, international investors, international students moving back into London and making London home again, where they might have relocated back to their, their hometown uh, or their home city during the pandemic. Now that the dust is starting to settle in the UK, touch wood that you know, no more lockdowns do come up in the UK, we're starting to see that investment back into the London real estate market. The same could be said for people that moved out of London during the pandemic. They moved to the countryside, they moved to the Yorkshire, they moved to the Northwest, the Northeast, whatever it may be, and they're now returning to London. And due to the amount of available stock that is currently on the market, it's being snapped up quite quickly, which is driving prices up that little bit more as well. So there's a combination of reasons really as to why those property prices have started to increase in London. But as a whole, it's great to see that we're in or the London property market is ending the year on a high 1.9% for the month. Uh, and as a whole for the year, you're looking at 6.2% now making the average property price in London 516,285 pounds. Now, another point that I thought was quite interesting when I was digging up some of these stats earlier today was the fact that London property now sits 2.9 times higher than properties in the northern region of the UK. Now you might be thinking that sounds absolutely massive, that's a huge difference, but it's actually the lowest ratio that we've seen in the UK since 2013. So really kind of, you could say closing the gap between um, between the northern regions of the UK, as we're seeing a lot of value in that northern, northern parts of the UK, property prices have been driven up substantially over the past 12 to 18 months. Um, and it's really closed that gap, bridged the gap you could say between London and the northern regions of the UK, which I thought would be worth noting as well. Now, in terms of the dwellings uh, and the types of dwellings and how they're transacting, how they've, uh, like you could say, grown in value over the past 12 months as well. So if we look at the detached dwellings, so in London, detached dwellings have increased by 12.6% from October 20 to October 2021. Semi-detached dwellings, 9.1% increase from 20, October 2020 to October 2021. Terrace, you're looking at a 6.6% increase. Flats and masonettes, about 4.4%. So all in all, as we mentioned, 6.2% across all asset classes. But in terms of the detached houses, there's a real fight for quality and fight for space for a detached dwelling in London. Um, it's You could say it's a rare commodity to, to come across a detached house in London. Um, and people are looking for that space now. They want to have more space. They can spend more time working at home. Um, and there's more need to have that space, you could say, um, from a London dwelling these days. Now, there's a quick breakdown here of uh, some of the areas in London that have seen the largest or experienced the largest amount of growth. So I will run through the left hand side of the screen first. But the average price of property has increased significantly during the past year. A number of localities experiencing double digit annual price growth include Tower Hamlet, Hammersmith and Fulham, Camden, um, Enfield, Hounslow, just to name a few. 
According to Dataloft, the annual increase in the average price growth in the capital was £36,500. Prime property prices in central London increased by 1.2% in the year to October. Now, as I mentioned, a few Tower Hamlets saw a 20.5% annual change to property prices. Looking somewhere slightly more central, Hammersmith and Fulham fared extremely well over the past 12 months as well. That experienced a 15% change in annual price as well. Um, another one worth noting is Camden in a city location. It's a trendy area of London. Experienced some very solid growth as well, 13.6%, um, but it really did vary across London itself. Chelsea and Kensington, or Kensington and Chelsea, sorry, 9.4% growth for the year. But as a whole, London has fared very well given the circumstances of the pandemic and how hard the UK uh, economy was hit throughout the pandemic as well. Uh, and we've definitely come out on top now, showing some very, very strong signs of recovery as we approach the new year as well. Now, lastly, rents are on the way up. As I mentioned, I've been slapped with a, about a 9% rent increase for my current tenancy, um, but we're seeing some very, very strong rentals as a whole. People want to be in these desirable locations in the inner city. Let's take Fulham, for example, Fulham and Chelsea, for example. About six months ago, I was having a look at some properties in that area. Prices at the time had gone down in, in, from a rental perspective, but prices had gone down about 13, 14%. I had a quick look at the, the area when I was doing this up earlier today and Chelsea, that Chelsea and Fulham pocket has now increased its rent by about 35% in the past six months. So it really bounced back. We saw international students flocking back into this country. We saw people from overseas moving back into the UK as well, and it really created a flurry of activity, not to mention that there was very low stock levels as well. So once again, we saw that fight for quality. People wanted to be in central locations. They wanted things that they didn't have in their last tenancy, for example. Let's just take an example like outdoor space. And I was speaking to an agent last week about this, and they've said that the demand for people looking for a, 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 somewhere that they can, a flat, a house, whatever it may be, but has to have a component of outdoor space was almost at the top of everyone's list that they were working with at the moment. So it really goes to show the way in which I guess this pandemic has now shaped the property market and changed people's mindset. Things that weren't as imp as important before are now at the forefront of a lot of people's minds. So advertised rents in London fell 3.1% between Q2 2020 and Q2 2021, split between a 6.8% fall in inner London and a 0.8% increase in outer London. On a quarterly basis, however, rents have risen in London since the start of 2021. Homelet data indicates that the fall in asking rents resulted in improved affordability for new tenancies in London, with tenants spending an average of 34% of their income on rent in July 2021, down from the peak of 37% in December 2019. And this little graphic that you can see on the right hand side. So if there was any light blue areas, that means there's been a decrease from the previous month in terms of rental, as you can see by this darker green that is on the map it it indicates an increase in rent from the previous month so the uk as a whole from a rental perspective has performed very strongly over the past 12 months as well and you can see these marks so the right hand side is the year on year change and the left hand side is the quarterly on quarterly change so as you can see as a whole the uk is moving in a very positive direction from a rental perspective that's a great thing for investors uh, if you own an investment property and you've managed to get in early you got in before you could say we've experienced this very strong price growth across the country and now you're going to reap the reward of having some very strong rental growth um, and you'll be able to benefit from some some higher rents on your investment property as well but all in all london has fared extremely well over the pandemic i think the past 12 months shows the resilience of the london real estate market we've seen some very positive signs on all in all sectors um be it from the rental perspective and be it from a buyer's uh, or a sales environment sorry um, but we're seeing some very strong signs as we head into 2022 i think we'll continue to see some very strong growth as we head into the new year we've seen some very strong growth over the past three months which has 
really increased activity in the London real estate market. People are moving back into London. We're seeing people from overseas relocating back to London as well. There's been an influx in overseas students uh, as well, which is fueling a lot of the activity. Flat shares are also up substantially, which is helping drive the rental market up that little bit more as well. Uh, another interesting stat that's worth mentioning is new prospective buyers registering in London in October was 56% higher than the same month a year earlier. So people want to be back in London. It's a flagship country, you could say, or a flagship city, sorry. And, and people feel a desire to be in London. I think it'll always retain that novelty and, and you know, that sense of prestigeness, you could say, uh, and, and it'll continue to attract investment into the city as well. So I think there's a lot to look forward to as we head into the new year. And I hope that's uh, given you a nice little breakdown of London itself and how the London property market has performed over the past 12 months. And if you have any questions, please feel free to, to flick me a message, give me a call. And I look forward to hearing from you all very soon. Have a fantastic week and an even better Christmas holiday. Uh, and I look forward to hearing from you all very soon. Thank you. Bye.